This is gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And today I'm going to talk about the recent news that AT&T is looking into selling uh, Warner Brothers Interactive, the gaming division of Warner Brothers, out to the highest bidder, supposedly for around $4 billion, and why they might be looking into this. But more specifically, uh, we are going to end up talking about how this might impact the comic book division or or what AT&T are thinking about as far as creating some capital. We know that they have a large amount of debt and they do have notes coming due soon. And of course, they have been impacted by coronavirus, COVID-19, and the pandemic shutdown. So first, I am going to read the article from Deadline.com. Go over that. Just give a couple of my thoughts right after that. And then Perch from Comics by Perch is going to join me. We're going to talk about how this impacts the bigger picture of Warner Brothers at at and but also how this could have effects on DC Comics and the properties there as well. I hope you do enjoy it, but let's read the article from Deadline.com first, and then we'll bring on Perch from Comics by Perch. AT&T is reportedly discussing the sale of its Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment Gaming Division, according to numerous reports. The deal could come in around the $4 billion mark and could have a licensing component that would still generate revenue from the intellectual property. Reducing debt is the goal of any deal, Warner Brothers interactive titles are largely tied to Warner-owned intellectual property, including Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, and the Lego movie, but includes the Mortal Kombat and Scribblenaut series. Among the rumored suitors are Take-Two Interactive Software, Electronic Arts, and Activision Blizzard. Spokespeople at AT AT&T declined to comment. The company will have John Stanky as its new CEO as of July 1, replacing Randall Stevenson. The new CEO enters with a mandate to divest properties and reduce debt. AT&T acquired Time Warner for $109 billion in the 2018 deal and has about $165 billion in debt. But there you heard it, folks. This has a lot to do with the $165 billion in debt that they are sitting on right now. Like I said, they do have notes coming soon, and this has a lot to do with that. Now, if AT&T were so willing to get rid of such a valuable property for $4 billion, which is a ton of money, Why wouldn't they look into selling off their DC properties as well? Well, there's a good reason for that. And it has everything to do with DC being a huge part of AT&T's streaming and movie strategies moving forward with Warner Brothers. And Perch and I are definitely going to get into that. So let's bring him on the channel and talk about what this all means. I think by now we've all heard the rumors that AT&T is looking to sell off their Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment Gaming Division for upwards of $4 billion. So far, we've heard that there's interest from uh, Take-Two Interactive Software, Electronic Arts, and Activision Blizzard. And here to talk to me about that and what it kind of maybe means for the comic book uh, division is my good friend, Perch. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today. So this is very interesting, and that is quite the high price tag, but I'm not completely uh, shocked by it because we know that when AT&T did acquire Time Warner, it was a huge price tag, and they have an enormous amount of debt, and they certainly have some uh, notes coming due. And with everything that's happened with uh, coronavirus, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic shutdowns, they certainly have been taking in less money. They're still going to have to pay those notes to stay current on their on their payments and everything. So they definitely needed an infusion of cash to keep steady. Is that how you kind of are taking this? Yeah, I think I think that I definitely I think they're looking at uh, how to then balance their books and as everything shakes out and where they want to put their bets. And I think the uh, the Warner games back during the sale, that was uh, one of the divisions that they were questioning and, and weren't sure if that was something they wanted to bring into the umbrella. There was some, as I recall, some licensing issues that were tied up at the time there. And so it was, it was almost seen as as too difficult to shed at that point or, or to not you know complete the sale as one entity. And also, I think there is the uh, the idea that with some games and some of the properties that would be coming out, that it could be more valuable in a couple of years. So I think I think for a lot of people, this isn't a huge shock. It's something that uh, they were kind of expecting to some extent, and and uh, with their current debt structure, it makes sense. Yeah. So obviously, they have a lot of big franchises that would be perfect for for video games. Obviously, the Batman Arkham Asylum uh, franchise is enormous. That's a huge money maker. That's uh, you know that is uh, can't miss. A release when those uh, uh, Arkham Batman Arkham series come out. Obviously, you have uh, like Harry Harry Potter and things like that. So it's not exactly a, a, a small portfolio and some very valuable properties. So it 
doesn't surprise me that four billion dollars is the price tag. Just mm-hmm. just for the for the DC you know properties alone for video games, it, it almost seems like it would be worth it. You know, obviously we saw what Spider Man did for PlayStation last year. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I, I guess the part I'm surprised, kind of along with what you said, is, is if they do have the ability to do Harry Potter titles and certainly DC, uh, Game of Thrones, uh, we know that at and is going to do a lot more with that property with prequels and other things. Whether it hits or not is another story, but um, it, it is an interesting, with this r- reported $4 billion price tag, um, it, it's an interesting number. I, I'm, I, I'm actually, <laughs> from my perspective, I think it's low. Yeah, it is. You know, those are some, some money making franchise. And obviously, um, yeah, Game of Thrones is has already been made into video games. You could see that obviously being like, a, you know, mobile gaming and things like that. The, you know, the gaming industry has really uh, grown exponentially with the with the uh, with the creation of, of uh, smartphones and things like that, as well as gaming consoles. Yeah, and I think with uh, the PlayStation 5 launch, and we know some new console wars are coming, so there's going to be some new titles that, that will be there. Um, I mean, it's the thing is, I think, and maybe part of what's doing this is that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of costs. They're going to go into, whenever you have a new console out and you have a new platform that people have to go to, it's expensive. It's, uh, it's fraught with a lot of release delays and, and uh, expenses. And so this may be a case of just, you know, they, they'll be able to get some money out, but they'll be able to cut some costs at the same time as uh, we're, we're ramping to some new consoles and some new things that need to be built. So I, it when we look at that $4 billion number, maybe a better way to look at it would be $4 billion plus all the expenses that are going to come over the next year. Um, you know, and, and is that core to AT&T's business? I think that's what AT&T is asking themselves right now. They, they want to position themselves, certainly in telecommunications and streaming and entertainment properties and everything else. And is gaming kind of one step further away from all that? I, I, that's probably how they're thinking about this. That is a very good point. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. When you look at their core competencies, obviously telecommunications, entertainment, they're moving into streaming, but they don't really have a gaming platform. It's not like they have their own version of a PlayStation or an Xbox, something like that. So it's not like they're heavily invested, you know, as far as needing properties for their own gaming console. They don't have that. They just need the the development of their properties for other consoles. So it, it makes sense to me that they would want to farm that out or 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 make some money off it without having to go through the headache and and the uh, all the work of actually developing themselves because that is not one of their core competencies. But obviously, telecommunications, I- entertainment, stuff like that are. And now that takes us over to, to comic books. We've already seen a lot of speculation that our comic books going to be next. <laughs> well, when you think about it, the, the, the $4 billion price tag is astronomical, and that's going to help them with their debt uh, obligations and, and keeping current and stuff like that. The amount of money they would actually get by selling DC Comics, you know, even with the licenses involved, if they wanted to sell off the licenses. Is... Yeah. I don't think they're going to be making $4 billion off the comics. Um, I, I think no. that... Uh, so you look at it this way. I mean, if you're at AT and T, you're an entertainment company, you're trying to curate properties. Uh, you want things you can license. So the games are you can't license games. In fact, games are going to consume a license. So you would be you would be licensing your license to a game studio. So I, I think there, if if AT and T owns the heart of that IP, that's what they're going to be focused on. They're going to be focused on uh, really curating these licenses and and owning and farming them. And part of their strongest games are going to be DC properties, and they're going to be making their money for years and years to come off games, just not having to to take the expense. They're going to be getting it off the license. So where the comics are concerned, it comes into, well, they could just keep the properties, and they could license out the actual making of the comics to somebody else, but you know, not sure that there's a buyer for that. Um, not sure that there's a, a company that, that would really produce. And, and as we've talked about before, it's just it's not enough money either on the, the sale or the cost end to really deal with it. So I, I know it's been a constant uh, for I think we've been dealing with this for over a year of will they or will they not sell DC Comics? I think until there becomes a really compelling reason, like with this game, there is a compelling reason to to sell it. There is a, there's a desire to cut costs and, and make some money and continue to keep the license. With the uh, with the comics division, those reasons don't really exist in the same way. Yeah, the only reason the comics division, if you would want to sell it off, would be as a part of like the the television and movie rights of those characters. And 
Uh, AT&T, Time Warner, obviously don't have any interest in that. They have huge plans for, for all those characters going on to HBO Max, obviously going into the DCU as it expands. They already have a slate of, uh, of movies coming out. So those characters aren't really worth anything without the television of movie rights. They just wouldn't make enough money. So really, you're right. It would be farming out the comics would be, be the only logical thing that they could do. But there might not be infrastructure or even a buyer out there, especially with a, an unknown market right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, getting somebody else to just do the production, I, I, one, I don't know if that makes sense for them, and I don't know who that person would be. Um, yeah, you know, you, you don't have any entities out there who are big enough or strong enough to, you know, to, to serve as a production house with none of the licensing rights. I mean, you, you take even IDW, uh, they do have plenty of licensed properties, but you see what they're trying to do is, is build up their own licenses. That's how they're going to survive. That's, that's their entire game. So I, I don't know who would be interested in coming in and just, you know, producing the comics with none of the long-term rights and none of the license. It just, it's not compelling. Yeah. So I do know that there's going to be rampant speculation and people trying to compare these as apples to apples, but they're really not even apples to oranges. It's completely different mediums. It's a completely different part of their business. Whereas AT&T is absolutely invested in DC characters for their movies television streaming whereas they, they they don't they don't have a gaming console and stuff like that they can farm that part out so uh right. you know it, yeah, it's exactly. not the same thing is what i'm trying to get out there it, it's not at all so i i, I just think it's uh it, i mean it's it's far more likely that at&t would just cut back to you know one quarter of the comics they produce than to sell it off at this point because there, there's like I said, there's a problem on both ends. It's not a compelling sale. It's not a compelling buy. But we also know currently uh, DC has made a, a lot of changes recently. They have scaled back their line. They've cut a lot of the, the lower selling comics or they're finishing them off in digital. But they've also opened up two new uh, distributors uh, for, for comic books. So it doesn't appear the moves that they are making that they're – planning on getting out of the comic book publishing business anytime soon. No, I, I don't. I, I mean, I don't think so. This bet's going to play out for, for some time. And I think we're, we're going to let it, we're going to see where it all goes. Um, I, I, I think the, the one thing that you could potentially speculate that DC would do in terms of comics, that would be a, a, a cutback or a status quo shift is that they just further trim their line into, you know, really just the core titles and, and, you know, really curating that part of the business, doing more with OGNs and digital. I think that's that's the potential. But other than that, I think what the DCVC today will be the DCVC in December. I, I personally think that you, we will see them trim the line down a little bit more, put more focus on these dig, DC digital first and explore that market and try and grow that and also uh, explore that YA graphic novel market, which seems like it's actually been doing pretty well for them. And it, it's a, a play to attract new readers, which is something that the entire comic book industry really needs right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it's what they're doing. The moves they're making right now seem like the right moves for where the business is at and, and where everything's going. So you heard it here, folks. Uh, if, if you're hearing that, well, they just sold off the you know uh, Warner Gaming division. Obviously, comic books are next. Not a really good, very good comparison. Two completely different uh, properties as far as AT and T and their core competencies go i don't see it, it there, there, there's no financial benefit as far as the comic books themselves anywhere near as far as gaming in order to get that kind of uh, money they would actually have to solve the tv and movie rights that certainly isn't happening that's a huge play for for at&t moving forward uh, so that's going to be bullshit i'm calling bullshit on it it's not the same thing dc comics is not being sold off to the highest bidder tomorrow I agree. Uh, I think that's, yeah, I can't agree more. I think we've covered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Perch. Yeah, this is going to be a shorter video, but uh, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. We've obviously explored these uh, these things in depth, but I did want to rehash them because we know it's all going to come up because of the sale, P Absolutely. potential sale. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, later, buddy. Take it easy. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.